right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Keto Rocks with your host, Jim Hobbs. And to my left, I believe, if he's shown up on your screen, is Mr. Brian Forsyth of Kicks. So, one of the things we're going to discuss with you today is buyer beware. <laughs> buyer beware. If it's, if, unless you're buying, like, I don't know if you can see this, real salt. And the only ingredient in it is real salt, you're okay. But there's plenty of spices you can go pick them up. It'll say salt and pepper, you think of, or salt, pepper, and garlic. And you think, okay, well, that's just, that's a perfect mix. But if you turn it to the back to the list of ingredients, more times than not, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to say sugar or some form of sugar is going to be in those ingredients, or it's going to be some seeds oils or seeds in the sauces. And so what you need to do is put that spice back down. But if you want to take a picture of the ingredients, you know, try to make your own. Or maybe down the road, you'll be able to buy your own that'll be good for you. The bottom line is you got to be aware when you're truly trying to live a keto carnivore lifestyle. Right now, the world out there that you go to to purchase your food and spices is against you because who controls the food industry is the same people who controls all the other industries. And so they want to get you addicted to sugar. They want to be able to put sugar in your body because that's key to making sure that you're a slave to that lifestyle of having sugar or and, and eating everything else are gonna just hand feed you. Brian, what did what do you what do you do for your I know you make your own, but did is that what I mean what spices do you use and did you come to that conclusion of picking up spices that you thought were good for you, then only to find out when you got home that, huh, I can't have this. Well, no, luckily I, I super analyze every ingredient label. I never I won't buy anything unless I know exactly what every ingredient is on that. I'll stand there in the aisle with my phone Googling every ingredient, like if there's something I never heard of. And usually that's a red flag right there. If you can't pronounce the word, and if it's a list like a paragraph long, it's like, don't buy it. Just, just pass on it. Because, you know, most of the time, well, now it's like, uh, you know, and it won't be that obvious. Like sugar, it won't say sugar. I mean, like that, that label you showed me the other day, it did say sugar, but a lot of times it'll be disguised as other things. There's, there's like, if you, if, you, um, if you Google like other names for sugar or other things they use. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing that right now, actually. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm doing that. So, so there's, the, there's the list. So dextrose, fructose, galactose, glucose, lactose, maltose, sucrose, Why 56... 56 different names for sugar, says the virtual health. 56 well, now, different names. Well, those are a little easier because they all end up in the O's. They have that O's on the end, dextrose, right. and all that stuff. And like milk is lactose. And uh, uh, But there's other things now that they use that are like plant-based that, that they stick in there that uh, – you know, you look at it and it'll be disguised as something, something such and such a fiber or this or that. And you'll think, oh, I, you know, that sounds like it's okay. But then you find out that's what they're using to sweeten it with. And it actually does affect, it, 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 it all comes down to what affects your, your, um, your insulin. And, uh, you I, don't know you, I don't know if you, if, can people see that on the screen? I don't know if it's coming out or not, but. 56 different names of sugar. That's just absolutely insane. And yeah, and the, the reason why is so people can get away with it on their labels, you know? There's so many different ways they can get around having to blatantly tell you that they put that in there. And the same goes with, uh, oh, there's so many different ingredients like that where, like MSG, when MSG got exposed as a, as a, a dangerous uh, um, additive, they got around that. Now they, there's a bunch of different names for MSG, and it's, but it's exactly the same thing, and it'll do the exact same thing to your body. 
Um, and there's so many different ingredients like that. So it's like, I, I rarely buy pre-mixed anything. I, that's why I cook all my own stuff. I make all my own spice blends. I, I do, like if I'm gonna make a sauce, I make my own. If I, if I wanna put cheese in something, like shredded cheese, I never buy a bag of shredded cheese because that's always going to have. Anytime that they do the work for you and make it more convenient, it's going to have more, more ingredients added to it. Like the, like the shredded cheese, they'll put things in there to keep it from sticking together. And uh, but if you buy the block of cheese and shred it yourself, you're just getting cheese. It's just straight cheese, you know. Right. I mean, even, even straight cheese has a few ingredients, but, but not like you know, it's not like the added preservatives and the whatever they call the, the ingredients that keep it from sticking together. But even this, like when it comes to even something like you were mentioning salt, um, like the red and real salt, that's, uh, you know, that's ancient sea salt mined from the earth. So it's even cleaner than actual sea salt because it's, uh, you know, it's not been exposed to the pollutants. It's coming out of the, the ground. Yeah, to the elements, right. To the pollutants and, uh, and the elements. I mean, the only other things in that salt are just trace minerals, which are, are, are good for you. Um, but regular table salt is like the, uh, you know, like, what is it, Morton's? <laughs> Whatever the, the, the brand. Yeah, that's it, Morton's rain. Yeah, that's it, Morton's it's is the... Just, uh, it's like the processed version. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll put, well, they say they put iodine. It's not even the right kind of iodine that you can use. <laughs> and whatever iodine is in, in there it has evaporated because the you know it's been on the shelf for so long so you know that they just use that to sell it as a selling point it really doesn't affect the you know so you're not getting any benefit from the iodine that they're putting on the label but other than that that that, that has i think that has dextrose in it to keep it from clumping you know they right. put, which is a form of sugar so yeah well, this article is written by Anna Barnwell. Uh, she's a MSW MPH, and that's a way above my IQ. So it sounds important to me, but I, I don't know what those stand for. But Anna wrote a great article. You know what those mean, Brian? Or I'm uh, no. <laughs> okay, all right. Just making sure I wasn't uh, make sure I wasn't by myself. So this article, she writes this great article. She says a whopping 56 different names for sugar. While some of these names are more obvious like brown and cane sugar, others are trickier to spot like uh, maltodextrin and dextrose. But here's the thing. Shockingly, over 68% of barcoded food products sold in the United States contain added sweeteners, even if they are labeled as natural or healthy. The U.S. Food Administration required all packaged food and beverages nutrition labels display the sugar content for a serving. However, it wasn't until January 1st of this year, 2020, that they started having to display added sugars. Uh, so up until this year, you, you, they didn't have to disclose to you they were putting all that stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, that's, so you're just better off not buying pre-made products, like anything that you buy that's already mixed or already chopped up, or, you know, you have to, you know, you have to deal with additives. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, the, some of the other names, golden syrup, high, fruit to, high fructose, corn syrup, honey, invert sugar, malt syrup, maple syrup, molasses, rice syrup, refiner syrup, sorghum syrup and treacle or t-r-e-a-c-l-e i've never even heard of that one but <laughs> the reality of it is that's another form of sugar or another name for it and so think there's a good chance if you pick up anything at a store that's in a that's bottled or packaged or definitely been processed it's got sugar in it it's yeah just a, it's it's not it's, like yeah it's not the natural form it's a it's a the form that comes from a factory <laughs> which is right. almost like the the worst form. <laughs> so for those, are, are you looking for a, a healthier lifestyle? You know, it's going to be some hard work and there's some due diligence on your part because the world and the odds are against you. They want you to, to oh, this one doesn't have sugar, just pick it up. And the marketers are so good because right now, low carb, keto, paleo, man, they will put put those markers on there. So it's keto friendly or paleo friendly. Right. And, and 
that, that they're using their definition of what keto is, not what the definition of keto would be for somebody who's trying to have that eat that lifestyle for health. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then something else just came to my mind because I think I sent a picture to you, Brian, last week, but you know, you even got to be careful in the meat aisles. In the meat aisles, they got food that looks like sausage and hamburger and all that, but it's plant-based protein that's made to to be marketed like sausage or hamburger and that stuff. You're talking about poison. It's a whole list of ingredients of nothing more than poison to uh, to to put in your body. And then the question you got to ask yourself. If you're truly going to be vegan for healthy reasons, why then do you want to taste the meat that you just left? Why not just be be for real and, and, and realize that meat tastes is great, it's good for you, and just buy the meat. Buy the authentic, original animal and just eat it and you'll be okay with it. Well, sometimes vegans have other reasons besides the I, you know, I, I can listen. I understand. I love animals. I'm, I'm not out to, to do, and, and I, I love animals. And I, it bothers me just as much as it bothers anybody out there that some of the processing uh, for animals is done in inhumane ways in my way. And I think we need to do a better job of, of, of doing that. But the reality of it is when you can grow your own food or, or raise your own food or know where your food comes from. Yeah, you are much better off than going through putting this processed chemical stuff in your body because these processed chemicals and Brian can tell you more about it in regards to the seed oils and the seeds, the seed oils that they put in just that's the other thing you can't even buy. You can't even go buy smoke almonds at a store at a regular store without finding seed oils, even in to smoke almonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, even like there's a couple brands of pork rinds, which is just pig skins and pig fat. But instead of frying them in their own fat, they put them in canola oil and fry them and, and then label it as the healthy version. <laughs> and, and it's like the unhealthy version. But yeah, the seed oil. So, you know, it's funny because uh, um, when I got my, my new Traeger uh, smoker grill, um, the guy sent me a bunch of rubs and sauces. I, I think I told you about it, maybe. Did I tell you about yeah. that? Yeah, you said, you said, yeah, you said you a whole bunch, of, but you can't use any of them. No, nah, because yeah, the sauces have sugar, they all have sugar in some form, brown sugar or regular sugar or and corn syrup. And then I thought, well, maybe the dry rubs, maybe some of those will, won't have sugar. And I, I'm looking and every single one of the, the dry ones has some form of um, seed oil. Um, like sunflower oil. I think it's sunflower oil that they use. And it's like, oh man, I can't use that, <laughs> which is a shame. So, so you know, I, I just look at the ones, I, I look at what they use for their ingredients, like we were just talking about, and, and I'll just throw one together myself without the sugar or the, or the oil. I mean, I don't even know what they put oil in a dry rub for, but I guess... Uh, or something. So it comes out, I mean, I guess for distribution or so it comes out, I guess it gives it more of a lubricant or something. I have no idea why. It makes no sense to me that you'd have oil on a dry rub other than for, well, for that. Yeah, unless you're into this whole this whole lifestyle, you don't really even know that that's bad for you because it's so common. And it's in it and like uh like Dr. Barry says it's a really cheap ingredient. I mean, that's why all these processed foods use the the oil, the seed oils because it's super cheap. You know, well, here's the other question. Now, I, I, I think I posted this on the keto site Facebook page. You know, you got a bottle of avoca avocado oil, and it's only ten percent avocado oil. If the rest of it's canola oil, and you're like, if you're gonna call something and have a picture of an avocado in the front and have avocado oil as the name of the the oil, but yet it's really canola oil. You got to ask yourself if canola oil is really good for you, <laughs> why not just call it canola oil 
and say 10% avocado oil added to it. Why would you call it the thing that's got the least amount of ingredient? Call it, name it after that, and, and then oh. put the poison in there. And they don't even mention that except for the fact that uh, ten, only 10% avocado oil. It's just crazy. Well, there's made, another, that's another instance where, you know, Make sure you look at everything on the label because that's that's what they do. They'll trick you. And in fact, most olive oils are are half, you know, the same way. It's part olive oil, part canola oil, unless it's extra virgin. Like you have to get the really good, like the extra virgin olive oil. It has to say that if it just says olive oil, just generic olive oil, it's most likely half and half like uh, canola oil. So you're not even getting the health benefits. It's, it's being canceled out. So that's so, what I'm saying. People are out there. You guys are going against a marketing machine. So you're, you know, you're, you think you're eating healthy. You're going out there, and the the other part of the the marketing machine is actually probably the position that you came from, or the facility you came from, or giving you that generic uh, diet of, of of low fat grains, fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, and the number of people I've talked to in the last week that said, oh, no, I can't have that because my doctor says that I can't have salt. Yeah. I cannot believe in 2020, this is where we are in the medical arena, talking about salt being bad for you when it's well, well, when that's real the, salt. Well, that's, ahead, the thing, though that's the thing they, they tell you, you know, they'll say, oh, no, you can't have salt because that'll raise your blood pressure. But then they don't say anything about the seed oils or, uh, I mean, then that's what causes inflammation and that's what constricts your, your arteries. That's what makes your, your uh, blood pressure go up. I mean, salt on top of it. I mean, once you have the inflammation, the salt can make it worse, but, uh, but the, it's not, the salt is not the cause of it. That's the thing. And they don't even talk about the real cause. In, in fact, I don't even know if they know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, they definitely don't know about the cholesterol. They know, I mean, they don't have a clue why, I mean, what they're, the, the advice that they're dispensing in regards to cholesterol, they don't even know what they're really saying to you. That's the bottom line is cholesterol is actually really good for you because it means that it's, it's uh, doing its job when it's fighting stuff for you. So to have it's good, but because um, it shows up <laughs> with people who've had issues, like, and they go, well, every time I had a heart attack, they had this cholesterol. Well, the cholesterol was trying to get to the problem, to, to try to, whatever the problem they were having, the cholesterol was trying to, to, to rid themselves of the issue that they have. Now, because they had a lot of cholesterol and they had a heart attack, they relate that, well, the cholesterol caused the heart attack. Well, that's not... There's no proof of that happening. No. Yeah, but that's, yet, that's the big one. But that's all controlled by the statin drug companies. They, they want you to think that so they can sell you their drug. Yeah, and they spin it that way because any, and you know this, Brian, I know, I, I know it from firsthand. You go to the doctor, if you had high cholesterol, they're going to try to scare you. They're going to go, oh, we're going to have to get you on this statin right here. You got high cholesterol, Mr. Mr. Hobbs. And uh, I'm like, no, 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 I'm not doing no statin. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not doing no stinking statin. I always say, I like my cholesterol. I'll keep it. <laughs> yeah. <I'll> keep it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, I worked hard for it. I'm keeping It's mine. I'm keeping it. That's yeah. anyway, I guess, I guess what we're really trying to say is you have to, you have to, in doing your due diligence, you're going to have to be really on guard anytime you go to a grocery store and looking out and you're going to have to be doubly on guard if you actually can go back into a restaurant and order stuff because they're cooking with the same ingredients so you got to be very careful you want to ask the server you know so stick with stuff that's you know just meat chicken eggs bacon stuff and even bacon is can can can, can get you too there's plenty of bacons out there that's got a lot of sugar added to it yeah yeah it always, it, yeah, especially at this store, you got to just don't assume that it's what it is. Like, uh, you know, you like take something like heavy cream. There, there are a bunch of different kinds of heavy cream. Like, I'll be the store brand. I'll be the, you know, the uh, 
Land O'Lakes brand, the, the, the other organic brand. But if you look at the labels, they're all different. And they're, you want to take the one that just says uh, heavy cream. And because uh, the other labels will have that, whatever, whatever, however you say the word, carrageenan or carrageenan, that ingredient, you'll find that yeah. in almost every one of them except for maybe one. So you want to make sure you're not getting that ingredient because that's another highly inflam inflammatory ingredient that they add in. And I think I've talked about this before. That ingredient is so you don't have to shake it. It, it keeps the particles suspended. That can, suspended you'll find, right. Yeah, it's in all the salad dressings. Like anything that you need to shake up before you pour it out, they'll put that ingredient in just because people are too lazy to shake their, their <laughs> thing. <laughs> That's, or, that's, you know, that's, just, getting, that's getting bad if you can't shake a shake of whatever it is, a salad dressing or whatever it is, whatever you well, can't yeah, shake. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Anytime they add the convenience to a product, they're, they're taking away part of the health benefits of it. I mean, yeah, you pay for the convenience with your health. So here's, here's the thing. We have a website or a Facebook page uh, called Keto Rocks Carnivore Country just anybody who's watching this do us a favor go to your grocery store pick up as many different products as you can and take pictures of the ingredients and post them on our page and let's just let's just show people from all parts of the world that the ingredients are all going to have hidden sugars in them and expose those let's circle them if you can if you have the ability to um circle the ingredients that you know are hidden sugars circle those take a picture of them post it up on our page so people can know and can learn what ingredients to stay away from uh, but you you'll be really surprised that no matter what you pick off off a shelf it's probably got something bad in that for you and most of the time it's going to be some form of sugar or some or cooked in some seed oil and so you really, really got to be on top of your game and really guard yourself from putting, because look, if you're out there working really hard to, to live this type of lifestyle, the last thing you want to do is someone sneak attack a sugar bomb on you and you're, and you're, and you got that in you because all of a sudden you go, why am I all of a sudden am I hungry? You know, <laughs> when you've been fasting, because that's what will happen. That sugar will trigger that. And you go, man, I'm kind of hungry. I want something. And you, well, you don't even know why. You know what happened to me? Um, a few months ago, actually it was, when was it? The, the beginning of March, it was right, we, we were still um, playing shows. We were in Annapolis and our hotel was right next to Whole, Whole Foods. So I ran over there during the day to the little food bar to, to see what they had because I always hear Dr. Barry talking about him and, him and Nisha go to the Whole Foods here in Nashville and get the brisket. So I went to the food bar and, and sure enough, they had brisket and they had pulled pork. So I, you know, I got one of those little containers and I just piled it with this brisket, took it back to my hotel room and just feasted on it. And, um, and then, and this was like early afternoon, like maybe one in the afternoon. And then I had to go over to the club for sound check and we didn't go on till I forget what time, 10, 10, 30. I was still stuffed. I'm thinking, man, like, well, how come I didn't digest that? Like something's not right here. And I remember just uncomfortable all night long. And I get back to my hotel and I, I remember looking in the mirror and my stomach's all puffed out <laughs> and I'm just, I, you know, I can feel it. Like my, my rings are tight. And, uh, and I was like thinking, what, like, why did that affect me like that? So the next day I went back there. And I, somebody said, well, did you check the ingredients? They have the little labels there. And I go, oh, I didn't even think about that. So I went back and looked at the ingredients and sure enough, there was canola oil in there. And it just completely blew me up. Like I was like completely swollen. Um, luckily the pulled pork didn't. So I, I loaded up on the pulled pork the next day. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I couldn't believe it. They took that nice brisket and, and put canola oil in there just made it into like a poisonous dish yeah i mean and, and that and, you know because I, I don't eat that stuff now so now when i do i can tell what it does to me and it's like scary i mean i was like what happened <laughs> i looked like the michelin man <laughs> <laughs> all 
I'm, I'm sure I'm sure you didn't look like that, but I'm sure you felt that way. I but did. The reality, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it's it's terrible, and that's that's one of the things you have to do. Like, we'll go out someplace and eat. And we don't go out that much, but go out to eat, and all of a sudden, you can just taste like a, this has got sugar in it. It's got, and I'll ask them. I said, "What does this have in it?" And they'll go, "Well, it doesn't have sugar in it, but." you'll keep at the go let me see the list of ingredients and it'll have one of those on there one of those hidden sugars and i i can't eat it i just won't because it's not worth me eating that and then turn around and and wanting to go down that path and letting my my brain and my synopsis start firing we need sugar we need sugar we need sugar <laughs> because it's once you get off of that it's harder it's hard to really understand what we're even talking about unless you're off of it. And then you realize yeah. you're not going to be that hungry when you do the 18, six or 16, eight, whatever intermittent fasting window you're doing, you realize it sounds hard at the beginning, but just by hearing it, like, what do you mean? You don't, you don't eat for 16 hours. It's really, you're not even hungry. I mean, you literally, sometimes you're going to almost have to go, you know what? I got to eat something because I want to go to bed at this time here. So you got to eat something, but you're not hungry. Right, Brian? Yeah, yeah, I've done that. I did that last week. I was, I, um, what do I do? Oh, I, I, you know, I get done my workout and I come up and, and, you know, usually a few hours later, I'll, I'll, um, I'll make my meal, but I forget, I, I got, I got sidetracked. And, and I looked at the time, I thought, oh, I better eat because, you know, if it gets too late, you know, it'll be, it'll mess with my sleep at night. And then right. I, I realized like the day before I had, I had eaten earlier than normal. So it was already, I was already at the 24 hour mark by the time I was like, you know, I should eat something, but I, I could, I wasn't even hungry yet, but I knew I should eat something. Right. But that's like 24 hours and I didn't even think about food. So it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I went on a, uh, you know, I used to do this regularly. I do a three-day fast every single week. I do a three-day fast. Well, I, I haven't done that in a while. I did it last week. But to be honest with you, after the third day, I still wasn't hungry. But, you know, it's amazing. I was just like, you know, I could really go another day. I could go, but I'm like, you know, I'm, I, I need to get some nutrition in my, in my, in, in my body. So I'm going to get some nutrition in my body. But, you know, three days, four days, I'm, I'm actually probably going to do a week. I think I'm going to do a week fast because I've just never done it. And I'm truly going to do seven days just because I just wow. want to totally cleanse my body. So if I don't show up and do one of the shows, I've just, I'm passed out. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, the last one I did, what's the 72 hours? Is that three days? Yeah, three days. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the longest that I've done. That was a little rough, but... It wasn't that I got hungry. I mean, I did here and there, like little bits. Um, but I was more, it was more about, I, I get stuck on a routine, you know, the routine of my bulletproof coffee and my meal. And I had to skip all that. And I just, that was messing with me. It was more of a mental thing than, than a physical thing. Right. So yeah. it, was, it was rough getting through it. And I noticed also, uh what well, was during the winter so i i was getting cold i was cold i couldn't i couldn't generate any heat in my body which is which is weird because usually i'm hot <laughs> yeah it's uh but you know it's it's really cool to see that intermittent fasting is becoming very prevalent people are talking about it more in all areas so it's oh, it's, it's good to see that yeah it's it's truly truly a it's truly the right way to live and you'll feel so much better and you put your, your body, you know, you know, everybody's talking about in you know, the COVID-19 and all this. And the reality of it is we have an immune system. And as long as you can uh, use food as fuel and to build and support your immune system, make your immune system as strong as it can be, you know, you have a much better chance of not getting sick than eating the crap that's going to lower your protection or decrease your immune system and open you up to cold, flu, whatever, cancer, any of those things, diabetes, you're just so much better off and eating a lifestyle that's going to strengthen your immune system, which is going to make life so much easier for you because you're never gonna be sick. 
Uh, you heard Brian last week or the week or a couple weeks ago. He hasn't been sick in decades, and let's you know, let's hope that continue to happen. But you know, same thing with me. I have not been sick. It's just you, when you when you are boosting or supporting your immune system by eating the correct foods that we were intended, our body was intended to eat and to digest. Your immune system is strengthened. It's not compromised, and you don't get sick. So you know, get out there and and build your immune system so you don't have to worry about something that's you know coming at you. Anyway, I didn't know why I went down that tangent, but I did. So yeah, I've been getting anyway. Out, I've been getting out in the sun this week too, trying to vitamin D. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, vitamin D is very good for you. Well, we're going to wrap up this uh, episode of Keto Rocks. And I guess we're going to just, this one will be deemed buyer beware. But before we, uh, before I sign off, just wanted to give a, a shout out to a lot of people who are really helping spread the message for keto, like Laura and uh, Lisa and Linda and Emily and Yuko and, and uh, I'm trying to think who else has been, been, been really uh, uh, an advocate uh, for, for keto rocks and, and helping other people, but we appreciate what you're doing out there. Keep sending those pictures, keep sharing those pictures of your, uh, keto carnivore dinners and, uh, keep sharing the message of keto carnivore because you are actually on the front lines making America healthier than they would be if you were not in the picture. So anyway, thank you for all you're doing. Brian, what do you got planned for this week? Uh, Good question. You know, I, I cooked that brisket. Um, when was that? I can't remember what day I did that, but. Uh, so you I, got three days worth of meals out of it. It was, it, it, well, I still have some. I had to freeze part of it. Um, <laughs> it that was a 17 pound brisket. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's not, I mean, you make, I had a six pound brisket today, 17 pounds. Goodness gracious. No, I, that 17 pounds would fit on my trigger. Well, that's why that's why I waited for the trigger to arrive before I broke that thing out. But uh, yeah, when I saw that at the store, I'm like, man, I gotta get that because it was on sale, of course. But uh, yeah, so I haven't I haven't attempted to to smoke anything else because I've just been <laughs> trying to work on that thing. So so I broke it up into some to some small like individual servings and put it in my freezer so I could move on to something else. Like tonight, I ate some liver you know, just to get some extra vitamins. But uh, I think my next, my next smoke project is going to be the, uh, another um, pork butt for the pulled pork. Cause I, I have one of those today too. I have two of those in my freezer. So I'm going to pull one out and let it thaw for the weekend. But the other thing is, uh, excuse the pun. Mean, huh? Excuse the pun. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> But the other thing is I need to, uh, I need to clean out that thing. I, it's all full of ashes and stuff from my last smoke. And I ordered a little, uh, little portable vacuum because I didn't want to use my regular vacuum from my house that I vacuum my carpet with to vacuum my, my uh, grill. But I think uh, while we're here, I heard my doorbell ring a little while ago. I think my little, little shot, it's like a mini, mini two quart or two gallon, uh, shop back like a little miniature one I, I ordered it just for my grill so i'm going to clean it out and get ready for the next smoke yeah i actually smart move because i i ruined our vacuum cleaner cleaning out our wood stove with a thing so i ended up having to buy a metal uh it's a fireplace clean out vacuum cleaner it's got a metal aluminum hose and everything else so that's what i use to clean that and my fire our wood stove so anyway all right, everybody. Well, let's stay healthy, stay out of a hospital, and uh, send those pictures of ingredients of products that you find on your shelf in your neck of the woods and post them on the Facebook page of Keto Rocks Carnivore Country. And until next week, stay safe.